Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if this is your first time watching, it is such a pleasure to have you watch this video. I am Uwem Akban. In today's video, I want to speak about three signs that God will deliver you from evil. The inspiration for this video is from the Jabez story in the scriptures. The Bible says, and Jabez prayed to God and God granted him his request. But the part that I want to focus on is the second part of his prayer. I know this very verses of the scripture has been talked about widely but what caught my attention was the second part of Jabez prayer Jabez said that your hand would be with me and that you keep me from evil that i may not cause pain you know that's where we talk about god delivering you from evil but i want you to look at this today in full spectrum you know when we talk about evil we only consider the evil that could come to us but the truth is if you look at it again you know that there's evil that could come through us because sometimes through our ignorance and arrogance and pride and indecisions and wrong choices, we could do things that cause us to be pained. We could do things that will hurt us and we could even hurt other people. If you want to keep on watching this video, then sit still and let's unveil this together. You can also see the last part of the Lord's prayer saying, deliver us from evil. I love it in the easy version of the Bible that says, do not let us agree to do wrong things. Keep us safe from Satan. Because that deliver us from evil, the line actually said deliver us from the evil one. If God delivers you from Satan, the evil one, it means no evil can come to you because it cannot touch you. So you cannot just say here, if God wants to deliver me, he will deliver me. No, it takes you participating with God. It takes you consenting to work with God. It takes you to do something in agreement with God for you not to agree with the devil for God to deliver you from evil because God can actually see ahead of you he sees further than you can see he knows the harm and the hurts that are before you even when you think you know everything you go into that relationship and you think you know the person and you think you know the outcome of things that you do you sign that business deal and you think you really know that person but the truth is it's only god that can deliver you from evil especially the things that ignorantly you cannot see through number one if god is drawing you to himself this is a sign that god will deliver you from evil the truth is that we have a lot of church goers who profess to be of christ but in reality they do not know christ they only profess him and jesus said in the scriptures no one can come to me except my father draws him. There are a lot of people outside who don't really know God, but they are a part of the church. And they just say, if I want to stop this habit, I will. If I want to stop watching pornography, if I want to start doing this, I will do it as if their willpower can actually bring them to that point. If you know that God is pulling you, is drawing you, it's for you to consent to his drawing and pulling so that he can deliver you from the evil that is ahead of you. Because God will not force deliverance on you. God will not force you because he did not make a man that is a robot that he can just use remote and do pim, 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 and the man will move. He says, leave that place because harm is coming. No, if God draws you to himself, you will be able to hear his voice. You will be able to be closer to him. And every harm and hurt that is ahead of you, he can speak to you. And then you would listen because the sheep can hear the shepherd's voice. But if you are not part of the fold, you would not recognize the shepherd's voice even when he's speaking. If you feel a drawing of God, he's drawing you to a closer and a deeper fellowship with him. That means that God will deliver you from evil because that drawing is a sign that he is trying to protect you, he's trying to tell you, come closer, come nearer, come into the house, because this is the only way you can be under my refuge. This is the only way I can be a fortress for you. First John chapter 5 says, We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. So to deliver actually means to snatch, which means you might have been walking blindly not knowing that there is a pit ahead of you. And God that sees that can snatch you to himself. And that is God drawing you so that you will not fall into that pit. He's drawing you from the love of the world and every kind of thing 
that will pollute your mind and make you perverse. Sign number two, if God is making you to forsake your idols, it is a sign that God will deliver you from evil. I know you could probably say, what do you mean by my idols? The truth is, the idols in our time is the idols based on our priority. Because there are so many things that sit on the throne of our hearts, whether it's riches and wealth and the things that we seek that replace God in our hearts. So before you say, I'm a child of God, I'm not an idol worshiper, you should should know that by the time there's anything that tries to take the place of God in your heart, which you've given your time to it, it means this thing has become an idol. That's why Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You can't serve God and mammon. Mammon is the God of money. You can't serve God and money. So if you are seeking after riches, you, you are ready to do any kind of thing to get that. That has to place God in your heart. And in 1 John 5, it says, Dear children, keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. In another portion, it says, little children keep away from idols. So those things that would take God's place in your heart are idols because they are all man-made things in this cosmos, in this world system that are trying to pull you away from God while God is dragging you and drawing you to himself. These things are there to pull you away from God. And that is why scripture says, love not the world nor the things in the world. Because if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It means you don't understand the love of God your Father. It doesn't say that you do not love God, but it says you do not know his love. His love is not in you. Because if his love is in you, his love will spoil you up to place him on the throne of your heart, to prioritize him more than anything else. And if God is bringing you to this place of forsaking your idols, your idol could be your smartphone. Imagine going out without your phone, how frantic you look, how anxious you look. Oh, even when you don't really receive a lot of calls, you could feel like, oh, someone might call me. You just feel that anxiety for not being around your phone. But do you ever miss God when you don't spend time with him? I'm also a victim of this. It means that your smartphone and whatever you do with it has actually become an idol. Your work could become an idol. You pray for God to give you that work. And now he has given you the work, but now the work has your heart, not God again. School can become an idol for a student. Anything good can become an idol when it replaces God, when it becomes your top priority in life. If you take God out of the picture just to get these things, or if you want to use God as a means to these things, they have become an idol in your life. And if God is drawing you back to your first love, drawing your heart back to himself and making you to start forsaking these things, to start fasting on your phone, on social media, to start giving yourself some time to value the presence of God. If you feel like you've started missing God, it means God is drawing you to deliver you from evil because all these things are trying to drag you away from God so that you will be hurt. Because some of the things you even prayed for, relationships, marriage, children, they can become an idol in your life and replace God. It doesn't say that these things are bad. It doesn't say that you should not be rich because the Bible says, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. God wants you to prosper in all areas and prosperity doesn't mean money. It's all encompassing. God wants you to be in full capacity to be able to carry out the work that he placed you on this earth for. Sign number three. If God is leading you to be healed of your traumas, this is a sign that God will deliver you from evil. Emotional wounds are not like physical wounds. At least if you wear a physical wound and someone would see it, they will be like, oh, sorry, have you taken this medication and that and the third? But emotional wounds are wounds that nobody can actually see through unless you let them in. And if you don't let God in, God won't force his way in. He knows and he sees. Emotional wounds, which are traumas, could be caused by childhood abuse, heartbreaks, by loss. It could be caused by molestation. It could even be caused by addictions. So there are many causes of it, but whatsoever caused it, God wants to heal you of the pain. Because if you're not healed of the pain, then you think you've moved on. It's just a matter of time before you are triggered and then you find yourself wallowing again in all the pain and all the sorrows and all of that regret and blame. And God wants you healed. If God is healing you from this, it means he will deliver you from the evil that this would bring to you. Trauma does not just leave, it spreads if you don't heal from it and changes form. It could turn to arrogance in one person, turn to pride in another, turn to anger in another based on what happened to them. It could corrupt your perception and belief about life. Just like women that have been hurt by men, 
they could turn to be these people that hate men totally and would be like men has come. And men also that have been hurt by women could also have a label on women. Let's go back to Jabez. Jabez didn't do anything as a child, just that he was born with pain. His mother named him Jabez, sorrow, trouble. Imagine Jabez just walking on the street or maybe he's in class and a roll call is being made. He came to him and then the name is shouted, sorrow, trouble. Imagine the trauma. Imagine the stigma. Jabez has carried this till he came to a point that he's fed up with it. He says, I can't bear this trauma, this emotional wound again. Because he's wounded emotionally for something that he did not even cause. He didn't ask for the mother to go through such pain to give birth to him. But now he has to suffer with the stigma and the trauma. So Jabez told God this prayer. That your hand would be with me. And that you keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. This is a very powerful prayer. He's saying, I know that based on what I've been through, I can also hurt other people. I can cause pain to people. Already being born as a child, I already caused pain to my mom, which gave me this name that comes with a stigma. I don't want to cause pain in anybody's life again. You know that in life as we live, sometimes a lot of people could hurt the ones that love them the most or the ones that are closer to them the most without even knowing that they are doing that because somehow they are they have had traumas that they have not healed from. And if God is leading you to heal from your traumas, he will deliver you from evil. That's a sign. You could go into a relationship with trauma and then your trauma now has become a frame of reference for you to judge everything that you see, every scene based on that trauma. So Jabez knew that there's no amount of success that he can get without healing from this pain. It will still cause him to hurt others or be hurt himself. So as a person, if God is leading you to be healed of your trauma, if God is drawing you to himself, you should know he's a shepherd. He will provide for you. He will preserve you. He will protect you. And if you're walking through the valleys of the shadows of death, you know that you are going to be saved because his rod and his staff is with you. God wants to preserve and protect you from all kinds of evil. And he's saying, I want to deliver you. I want to snatch you from that thing you don't know that could hurt you. It could be a relationship. It could be a business deal. It could be anything. But it's only God that can deliver you. And he can only do that when you partner with him and allow him to draw you to himself, to a closer place where he can speak to you as a shepherd. You allow him to be the center of your life, which is it becomes your number one priority and focus. And then you allow him heal you of your past and all the things you've been through. I hope this video has been beneficial to you and you've learned something from it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to watch the next video.